Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. We're just a couple of kooky, crazy kids in love that love doing some reaction videos together. Yes, we do. And so we're checking out uh, some more from the Internet Historian. We did the um, Engoodening of No Man's Sky. Really enjoyed that. And so we're kind of doing the, the I guess what would be the opposite of that story, which is the fall of 76, which is about Fallout 76. And uh, sort of, you know, the fall of that game, I guess. Okay. And yeah, we're gonna check that out. If you want all of our uh, Fallout reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. We're currently doing the uh, Fallout Storyteller series. You can learn more about that. And so, yeah, looking forward to checking out some more of the Internet Historian. Yes, we are. Well, all I heard of this at the end was please behave yourselves. Yeah, that's all I, that's all I got either. Yeah, I guess that's all you, you meant to get. I just <laughs> want to pause it and go back to it. If you found this tape, it means that everyone is dead. All working at a different office. <laughs> How did this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Buckle up, buckaroos. Today's lesson is the misfired launch of Fallout 76. Hmm. Nice intro. Mm -hmm. 2018. It began with everyone getting just a little hyped up. Have we waited long enough, guys? Oh, God, yes, we have, Todd. I think we have. Fallout 76, Bethesda's biggest game yet. My God, it was exciting. And they promised we'd know more at E3. I wonder if they're actually E3 watching. hype time. I think that's the, the Game press of Thrones conference. video. Oh, okay. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Four times the map size. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. And it's our biggest one yet. My God, it was exciting. <laughs> November 14th, 2018. The game goes live with a day one patch of 50 gigabytes. For fuck's sake, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Once that's downloaded, people start logging into the hellscape that is Fallout 76. Oh, and oh dear Lord, they never fix the bugs. Oh, no. And there are so many of them. Goodbye world, goodbye necks, goodbye body, <laughs> goodbye heads, bugs, bugs, bugs everywhere. Server crashes, game crashes, old bugs and poor from 4 oh. 4. Use more than one nuke at a time, um. server's dead. Texture's far too texturous, an all-consuming void. <laughs> Log 307. Can't pick up stuff, can't stop asserting dominance with a T-pose. Frame rate problems, screen tear problems, getting too swole, getting underneath <laughs> the map, getting attacked by invisible enemies, spawning too many enemies. It kind of speaks uh, for itself. Spawning too many god rays. Also, your camp resets after every session, and sometimes it goes underwater. Holotapes randomly play static, but too many holotapes mean none of them will play. Enemy AI is far more A than I. Animations are broken. Surprise. Floating objects and a traveling merchant. Just to name a few. <laughs> Joseph Anson has a great video that documents just the ones that he found personally. Thousand one glitches. That video is three hours long. Oh my god. Um, but it gets worse. Error CE348780 can corrupt your data and force you to reinstall the game and console operating system. A few PC players had their computers brick entirely. Oh. So when the date rolled over to the 1st of January 2019, um, the nukes in the game stopped working altogether. No one thought it prudent to program in other years in an always online game. Oh my god. Hmm. A few players were straight up logging into other people's accounts. This guy had a level 78 character that was randomly replaced with a level 8 character. Oh. Bethesda said they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> many sure was players bad. are not thrilled with this game, and they want Bethesda to know that. And they want everyone else to know that too. But Bethesda owns the platform. Is Fallout 76 fun? Yes, it is. Banned for racism. <laughs> so locked. They had no direct outlet for their rage. The only solution was to put a torch to everything else. Oh my god. Reddit. Twitter. Bethesda's other games on Steam. Mm. The backlash was immense. But surely level heads would prevail. The reviewers would come out and say that the game isn't so bad. Oh dear lord, they hate it. This is so sad. Despacito, play Country Roads. Hmm. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, 
pointless walking and post apocalypse. And the YouTube community had this to say. It's really fucking boring. <laughs> I could barely bring myself to play it in order to finish this review. No one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. I'm not gonna subject myself to another 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. In short, <laughs> Fallout 76 is morally, technically, and creatively bankrupt. The mods on Bethesda forums were working overtime. The mods on Reddit almost gave up. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that some people didn't enjoy and have fun with this game. But what I am saying is that the Metacritic was really funny to read. <laughs> so what happened? Well, it came out that development was hugely rushed. The deadlines were tight. Too tight. <laughs> Plus, this wasn't Bethesda's A-Team. It's actually a relatively inexperienced division based in Austin. And the scope of the game kept getting bigger. We're gonna need distant weather systems. Hey Todd, I stayed up all night and I just We're finished- We're gonna the need 16 times the detail. Please, Todd, no more. We're gonna need four times the size of Fallout 4. That and they were trying to patchwork the old Bethesda creation engine into a multiplayer framework. What else could you expect? That's why I give my kids Fallout 76. The fool. Oh! 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 could tolerate the bugs and the bad reviews and the irate players, but what they couldn't tolerate were the exploits. Um, infinite inventory, infinite invisibility. The frame rate was tied to the game speed, so people were going a lot faster than they should. Server hopping for more items, infinite cash and infinite duplication, unlimited XP, unlimited nuking. The nuclear codes were unencrypted and you could wall clip into the quest room. And someone was given the curse of infinite invincibility. Hmm. Naturally, this can really mess with other players' online experience. So Bethesda was ready with the ban hammer. This just works. And a blindfold to wildly flail around and take down anyone who happened by. But Bethesda wasn't satisfied with just banning people. No, they're a progressive company with big <laughs> ideas. They wanted to give a road to redemption. So support sent out this email to players caught cheating. We would be willing to accept an essay on why the use of third-party cheat software is detrimental to an online game community. <laughs> That's right. 500 words on why you're a very naughty boy, and they may really? just give you your account back. But a couple of days later, the mocking from news outlets caused them to reconsider this approach. One more exploit. In all the Bethesda games, there's a dev room. Every item in the game is kept here. Security has to be top-notch because otherwise, someone could just waltz in and take all of the best items in the game and it would be an absolute disaster. Well, shit. Of course, Bethesda wasn't equipped to deal with the issue. People started flooding in, taking the best items in the game, then selling those items on a black market of sorts. Ooh. Oh, At wow. first, they tried the usual approach. Banning <laughs> people who had some of the best items in the game. You spent 700 hours just to get the best gun? Die, cheat. <laughs> Next, they put in a system where players would get tagged if they ever entered the room, and they banned those players. That wasn't much better because people would just start using Smurf accounts. Click <laughs> with a level one account. Get all that good shit, then get the fuck out. <laughs> then use a duplication glitch to get a ton more of those items. Oh, then wow. transfer that stuff to your main account and you're good to go. Ooh. Bethesda then takes out this level one and calls it mission accomplished. And you've just beaten the game. Hmm. So the problem continued. Bethesda is running out of ideas to solve it. There's a lot of speculation in the media and among players about how exactly people are getting in, but no one except for the exploiters knows for sure. That said, Bethesda needs to act fast before it ruins the economy of the game. So they wrote another email and sent it out to the Smurfs. Um, uh, hello, Cheetah. Do you want to tell us how you did it and we might unban you, please? <laughs> Should we not hear back from you, the account will simply remain suspended. It's not known whether this approach worked, but from what I've seen, it's still possible to get into the dev room. November 22nd, 2018. Just a week after the release, the game goes on discount. From $60 to $40. To $35 to 30. You can find it for 15 on eBay, and in Germany they're straight up giving it for free when you buy a PlayStation controller. 
Oh, also, wow. some stores are just zip tying it to other products. <laughs> but to Bethesda, it's worth selling the thing at a price close to zero because it brings people into the atomic shop, which is where the real margins are. And it inflates the poor sales figures. Let's have a look at those. The latest figures show 76 sold less than a sixth of what Fallout 4 Ooh. did. Not good. There's also been a massive oversupply of hard copies. Although, what's the point of a hard copy when the thing is just a cardboard disc telling you to redeem an online code? And while sales are low, returns are high. Immediately upon release, people began asking Bethesda for a refund. 76 is not on Steam, it's on Bethesda's own platform, so they have all the control. If players only played the game for a few hours, then generally they'd get their money back. However, it came out that people were sometimes getting refunds after a full 24 hours of play. Quite generous, but then word about this spread to forums. Then to Reddit, and a post got 12,500 upvotes informing people that this made pretty much everyone eligible for a refund, and the comments told them exactly how to do it. Bethesda was flooded with requests for refunds. And their response? Shut it down, lads. <laughs> no, no, no one gets a refund now. Everyone go home. Show's over. Robot customer service man, engage. Customers who have downloaded the game are not eligible for a refund. We apologize for the inconvenience. Die. -e a few things followed. Mm. First, people got mad. Yep. Yeah. One hardcore gamer even trashed a GameStop for refusing his refund. <laughs> Shit. You get that you're mad, dude, but it's not the GameStop's fault. Yeah. GameStop is Brian. How can I help A bit of an overreaction, mm -hmm. but probably yeah. also fake. Second, the media. Oh, probably fake. Yeah. And third, a class action lawsuit. Their inconsistent mm. refund policy and terms of service may not be strictly legal. November 27th, 2018. Miglachio and Rathod LLP filed a class action suit on behalf of customers. Media quickly picked up on that. Wow. Their main argument is that it's a sometimes unplayable game owing to its technical problems, then they're refusing refunds, and that Bethesda is engaged in a strategy to release it anyway, and then slowly patch their way into a more playable state. Updates on this lawsuit are slow, so I'll keep you informed on the second channel. Ad time. Look, there's a meteor headed straight to Earth. Oh my god. We must do something. Was anyone curious enough to read about it online? Not me. Not me either. Nope. Oh no. Now people think I'm dumb and I have died a virgin. Oh god. <laughs> Don't let this happen to you. Get Curiosity Street. It's a streaming platform with some of the best documentaries and non-fiction from around the world. Partial nudity? Maybe if you look hard enough. But more importantly, <laughs> the most arousing thing of all. Knowledge. Works for your Roku, Android, etc, etc. <laughs> it works on everything, okay? Science, nature, history, tech, society. <laughs> CuriosityStream.com slash Internet Historian for unlimited access to the world's free top documentaries and non-fiction series. Use the promo code Internet Historian during the sign-up process to get the first 30 days free, then cancel any time. Wink. <laughs> Please, look, I need, I need sponsors. I, I bought a lifetime supply of toilet paper thinking I was saving money, but then I left it out in the rain and the crows got it, <laughs> and now I'm back to square one. Please. <laughs> CuriosityStream.com slash Internet Historian. Ads over. Let's rewind a little bit. Fallout fans <laughs> made their pre-orders, and the most dedicated pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition. Ooh. Wow. It came with a helmet, box, map, army toys, and a genuine <laughs> West Tech canvas bag. Fast forward to the release, and customers notice that their precious bags, which are supposed to be made of the finest canvas in the land, Ooh, yummy. look a bit different. Bruh. In fact, it looks like a carry bag the real bag should come in. Yeah, looks Bruh. like nylon. Do they really just advertise one thing and deliver another? Yeah. Can't mm -hmm. do that. So there was a surge of backlash, and people began emailing right, Bethesda, asking for refunds, asking for answers. 
At this point, <laughs> customer service is absolutely over it. They are done with the facade, and they send this email in response. Hello. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive oh. to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. Oh my god! Oh, wow! That's the whole email. Staff at Bethesda aren't even hiding their contempt anymore. Naturally, the internet goes wild. Mm -hmm. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I got so mad, I shaved everything off my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, this is a bit of a PR nightmare. We have to quell the outrage. What do we do? Well, we've got this in-game currency. Let's just give them the minimum amount of that. <laughs> Fantastic oh, <wow>. idea. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye. Anyone who paid two to three hundred dollars for the Power Armor Edition is here five dollars entitled to five dollars worth of in-game currency. Oh my god. That you'll be able to spend with us. Five hundred atoms? Fuck yeah! What are you gonna do with your atoms? I'm gonna buy five eighteenths of the white paint version of the power armor. Whoa! What about you? Light wood laminate, light wood laminate, light wood laminate. <gasps> Fuck the bag! He's right! Fuck the bag! Light wood laminate, light wood laminate. <laughs> of course, this was Bethesda's fantasy of what would happen. What really happened is further outrage. Yeah. And yeah. Then the media started piling on. <laughs> Almost heaven. Where's Virgin? It even became part of that class action lawsuit from earlier. Bethesda put out a tweet apologizing for their curt customer service and gave a different excuse for why they didn't make the bags. A shortage of material, apparently. That was quickly debunked. Because it turns out they did make the canvas bag, except they gave them all out to influencers. Mm. Oh dear. It's not the same one, of course, but it's sourced from that ever scarce material, canvas. <laughs> but what's more amusing is that it turns out there is a canvas bag in the game. If you don the postman's outfit, which of course can be found at the atom shop, for 700 atoms. Ooh, just short. Hmm. Well, the bleating from the online community <clears throat> and Bethesda's <laughs> lawyers realized there would be trouble, so they decided to capitulate. All right, fine. We'll make your precious fucking bag. If you want to claim it, you'll have to fill up this form with your name, personal details, address, etc., etc., and we'll ship out the bag to you in four to six <laughs> months. <coughs> but it doesn't quite end there. Of course, Bethesda <coughs> is known for bugs, and of course, their website is a buggy mess too. Hmm. Turns out all of the customer support inquiries are unsecure and open to the public. Oh my Ooh. god. People can open and close and change them at will. Listed are details of full legal names, phone numbers, home addresses, and more. If you've requested your canvas bag, you've just been doxxed. Oh. Wow. Not knowing how to immediately fix the problem, Bethesda panics and temporarily shuts down the whole website. And that is the tale of the duffel kerfuffle. <laughs> How could this have been so difficult? Oh they made one for New Vegas. One last piece of merch, a rum drink. Nuka Cola Dark. Pre-orders available in September. Shipped out on November 14th. $80 plus postage and handling. Not cheap, but in return, you got a very cool bootle. Looks good on the shelf. A great conversation piece with the family over Thanksgiving. Or at least it would have been. November 14th came and went and there was no rum. Uh, okay. A week later on November 21st, an email comes through. There's a delay. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard, they say. The usual fallout standard. All of this just works. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard. So we'll have it for you soon. No specific date given. Oh, wow. One week later. Nothing. Then on December 5th, another email. Oh my gosh. Good news. We start shipping on December 12th. It's been nearly three months since you pre-ordered. But as a show of good faith, we made this promotional video for you. Seriously? And this is where things went from tardy to retardy. Right there. <laughs> Did you catch that? That's just a regular industry bottle and a plastic shell. We paid $80 and waited a quarter of a year for a plastic shell? People oh, were not happy. Look at that ratio. Nothing in the marketing said that it was a plastic shell. Super premium, we were promised. 
and the meteor agree. Wow. Man. Just screen them left and right. Canceling their orders. Silver Screen tries to convince people that it's not cheap and shitty. It actually costs us twice as much to make the plastic one than the glass one. What? Then what the fuck? Yeah. We, we spent a hundred hours coding the design. Convincing stuff. So it arrives, just a few days before uh, Christmas. The rum is about the quality you'd expect. Can I swear on this? It's my own show. <laughs> Worse is the design. The oversized lip means liquid can pour inside the shell. Hard to pour because how they made this damn thing. I spilled like half the shot. Very dribbly. So you're best off opening the whole thing up to prevent spilling. If you do that, there's a good chance that you'll snap the flimsy plastic. Hmm. The liquid will immediately ruin this cheap paper sticker. Some made their own at home and the quality was about on par. <laughs> but look, if you do want a decent version of this product, there are reputable sellers of them. They're on Etsy. They're far cheaper and they actually give a shit. Hmm. Not gonna lie though, some of the memes that came out of this were pretty good. Now, many claim that this was an honest mistake. <laughs> <laughs> or that customers were at fault for misinterpreting ambiguous marketing. I disagree. All of the marketing shows other glass items. Mm -hmm. All of mm -hmm. the mock-ups show something more akin to frosted glass than plastic. Yep. They give plenty of descriptions of the product too, and not once do they mention plastic. And they were engaged in a bunch of other tomfuckery as well. <laughs> Before the product was even available, they flooded their own product reviews with a bunch of five stars. Wow, they paid for reviews. This raised mm -hmm. some eyebrows, and people on Reddit even called them out for it. So they deleted them. You can see all this activity on the Wayback Machine. Hmm. Now, if they're happy to deceive people in this way, it seems silly to give them the benefit of the doubt about the glass. Yep. It's also worth quickly talking about the Bethesda merch store. Some of these items are pretty neat. That's cool. Good idea. <laughs> I'd have that. Fallout 76 pant. Singular. But why is he so mad? <laughs> the photography is all just slightly... off. <laughs> This gaudy jacket was mocked relentlessly on social media. Does the $76 and $276 really make it more immersive? And why did they just toss it on the ground? And it comes in this crumpled up toddler body bag. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in merch and you don't have an iron? Why is she wearing the size XXL? She's clearly not happy about it. But who looked at this and said, good job? <laughs> and that is the air no, shot. that's surprising. <laughs> And what the fuck? They made the bottle properly. Yeah, one of those, please. But bigger bucks. and brown. <laughs> Is that so hard? <laughs> Let's get back to the game. December 2018. There are two new patches released that caused quite a stir. The oh! <laughs> For PC, oh they included a number of quality of life improvements, including push to talk. But it also brought in field of view sliders. Oh, hooray! Okay. <laughs> Increased stash capacity from 400 pounds to 600 pounds, and a small buff to automatic <laughs> weapons. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> they decreased the carry weight of bobby pins so it no longer took up 10 to 20 percent of people's inventory. I got a box of bobby pins the other week that said, that said, weigh these. <laughs> <laughs> there were also upgrades to the camp that allowed for easier construction and a bunch of bug fixes. Hooray. <laughs> the bad. <laughs> a whole bunch of unannounced stealth nerfs. They generally made the game grindier. Emo production was decreased. Fusion cores burnt out faster. Legendary enemies spawned less frequently. On guard. <laughs> <laughs> and the backlash was significant because everybody knew why Bethesda was doing it. To encourage people to use the atomic shop. And let's talk briefly about that store. Some of the prices are outrageous. A Christmas tree for $12. A Santa outfit for $20. Blue and yellow paint for $18. Oh look, $3 for the same sweater vest and slacks item imported from Fallout 4. But the biggest offense of all was the holiday emote bundle. $24 for some Christmas themed emotes. Twice the price of these games. Mm -hmm. The media agreed that these were egregious prices. 
But worse, they're engaged in some deceiving marketing practices too. Oh look, it's marked down half price. But it's not. It was released half price. They're artificially jacking up the price yep. only to then give it a fake limited time discount in order to create a sense of urgency. That's illegal. Here in Australia at least, in hmm. Canada and in the EU. Reddit quickly picked up on this and pointed it out. Bethesda reacted by scrapping the discount and just setting it as the always intended price. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes of whining now, so I'm just going to leave <laughs> it here. I didn't even get a chance to touch on the new pay-to-win fiasco. The new camera item that lets you teleport, dwindling player numbers. But on the flip side, they're also adding new content and improving the game over time. Heck, No Man's Sky was a surprising comeback. So, maybe Bethesda can do it too. Just but for now... Todd returns to cryostasis, <laughs> hiding in his <laughs> bunker until the bombs of outrage stop falling, Proceed and returning complete. only when it's time in. to get our hopes up once again. CuriosityStream.com slash internet historian. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll still buy Elder Scrolls, though, the new game when that ever comes out. But uh, <laughs> very, uh, yeah, very, I don't know, just like disturbing to see all the ways that Bethesda was ripping people off with Fallout 76 and just, I mean, went into not just all the glitches itself, but yeah, all the transactions and like the doing, like the whole thing that pissed me off the most, I guess, and I didn't even buy anything, um, <laughs> is the bottle and being like, and then coming back and saying like, oh, this actually costs us twice as much to make, to make a shittier product and to, uh, yeah. And like uh, that, that made no sense to me, that, that, that excuse. I like how at the end, uh, they did try to put an, an optimistic kind of finishing touch on this by yeah. referencing how, you know, No Man's Sky had a, surprising and remarkable comeback. And mm -hmm. yes, I think the only difference that I see here is that at least from what we know from our from the video about in good, being good, yeah. you know, No Man's Sky is that um, that seemed to be one man who was put in a role he wasn't suited for and he was mm -hmm. in over his head. Um, it felt like a more honest mistake. Like he mm. honestly was trying to deliver on these things and it just so happened that it wasn't happening by the deadlines or, you know, um, whereas this, to advertise a canvas bag and send a nylon mm. one and just say, well, we don't have the one that we marketed to you, tough. It's too, it was too expensive to make. <laughs> like, and then the, the shitty bottle and the no refunds on games. I mean, it was yeah. just, to me, this seems a lot more devious and manipulative and trying to find whatever marketing ploy loophole that they can to extract yeah. money from their customers while not delivering. I think the difference for me between Fallout 76 and uh, No Man's Sky is the fact that with No Man's Sky, they just like, they didn't have a bunch of excuses and emails and, and, and saying out to people. It was just kind of like, all right, what, you know, what, what, what is the actual, like, I liked that they filtered in, okay, what's the feedback that is just like people ranting and being angry? What's the feedback from people that is like actually constructive that we can help like build and make this better? And let's get to work and let's do that and let's not give excuses and let's just get the work done so we can start like making this a better product for people. Versus with Fallout 76, where they were kept coming up with different excuses about why and like, you know, trying to, and, and different justifications. Like I said, like the weird justification of, you no, know, this costs us way more. So you should like it because it costs more to make. And it's like, mm, well, if it costs more to make, then you're an idiot for yeah. making, spending more on an inferior product. Yep. Um, and like, you know, especially one that you had not advertised it looking like. And so, uh, and then especially like if after, the can with the whole canvas bag thing. I couldn't remember the timeline. If the canvas bag thing happened after or before or after. I mean, he talked I about- I think it was bag first. Yeah, because he talked about the bag first. So after the whole bag thing, like why would you give them the benefit of the doubt that like you would spend more money? Like, so now you're saying nylon, it costs twice as much as, as canvas uh, to make for the bags. Um, so I think that's where uh, the stories, uh, the two stories differ from me is like you were kind of talking about like one seemed more 
like the intent always was to, well, how can we like make them, like, okay, you know, profit, obviously you wanna make the most money as possible. You're, you're a company and you got a bottom line. I, I get that and everything like that. But it's different trying to like cheat your customers. Mm-hmm. Um, and to make that bottom line versus actually giving them something that they want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I gotta say from, from the good need of No Man's Sky and in this video, people are passionate about things that they enjoy and they care about, and yeah. especially things that they spend their money on. Um, you know, mm. we're in a economy where there are many, many people who don't have a lot of disposable income, so what they choose to spend it on is because it's something that really means something to them. Yep. Um, you know, and you see that, like the guy who messed up the GameStop, I mean, first of all, as somebody who has worked in a store doing mm-hmm. retail, there's that part of me that wants to be like, fuck that guy. Like, it's not GameStop's fault. It's not the people who work in GameStop who are not gonna have to clean up his mess from his tantrum. Um, And he should never have done that. On the flip side, we don't know that guy's story. Maybe the 60 bucks he spent on this game is the only 60 bucks he had to spend on anything for the month. Yeah. You know, and so to be cheated was a huge betrayal for him and something that really cost him economically. Um, And I think, I do appreciate the fact that the gaming community, when gamers or when game companies put out an, a sort of inferior product, they let them know. Yeah. And no, you shouldn't do it by tearing up a GameStop, but like going to the online reviews and like really telling them specifically mm. what is wrong with the game, you know, good game makers like the guy in No Man's Sky looks at that and says, okay, I need yeah. to take this and, and fix this. Um, so I do respect that. Yeah, and then you did talk about, or you like briefly showed afterwards that like the no charges have been brought up against him, and like that might have been a staged uh, video of the mm. GameStop one. Um, so that I mean that one might have been staged, but like you bring, still bring up a good point that like there were people that maybe that didn't tra- trash the GameStop store that were, did spend like you know a lot of money on this game, and um, you know that was for them like uh, a lot of money, like you said, maybe it was like the sixty bucks that they had to to spare that month, like you know to to actually get this game and you're trying to make ends meet and you, you know, spend on something, you know, a luxury item like that and an item that you want to like, I don't know, help release the stress of, uh, <laughs> of the work day Working three and, and jobs life. to yeah. make rent. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, I, you can definitely see the, the, the anger there. Um, uh, another good video from the internet historian. Um, and I like his, I like his ads that he, that, that he does. <laughs> Those are funny. Yeah, I agree. I'll be curious to see, um, to kind of like watch this story now. I think one of the things that I really love about watching the um, internet historian is that I wasn't really up to the news on Bethesda being sued in a class action. And it says like, that's still in process and developing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm kind of curious to see where this goes and how it ultimately lands. And so now there's something that I actively want to follow now in the in the gaming news world to find out where that goes. Yeah, and this video is older, so maybe uh, it has come out already, but I mean, those things take a f- forever to, uh, to happen. You'll let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments, and uh, if you still played uh, Fallout, Fallout 76 and you, st- you know, stuck with it and then uh, the game improved, let us know how it did. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for The Fall of 76 by the Internet Historian, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive. <laughs>